Here we go. Welcome, Ian. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm awesome. You know, it's great. We're we're sitting here talking as if we've like not already been talking for a few minutes, but uh I, I sorry, think this... and you are? Have I, have I met you before? <laughs> it's gonna be like that today, huh? Yeah. Oh man. So I mean, I don't know about you, but I've just been really busy. I feel like I haven't seen my home in days. Um, I've seen every inch of my home ish from one room from one desk yeah. looking out a doorway yeah so so this uh this coronavirus thing man it's it's real this is it's happening. real it's busy and not busy all at the same time it's weird and and like th- so it's busy like i'm sure you're getting a ton of requests from people that are you know trying to work from home you might be selling some extra laptops that you wouldn't have normally sold, you know, that kind of thing, right? Maybe selling yep. some voice. Um, laptops, lots of VPN, um, two-factor-ish setups, um, screen connect sharing for companies that don't have tools that are designed to go over VPNs, mm. um, creative concoctions while keeping the security thing in mind. All those are happening all at the same time. Man. So how, how long ha, has your, what do you guys have? You have a prime minister? What's, what's that Trudeau guy? We have a prime minister. Yes. Okay. So um, if you guys, for those of you listening, uh, Ian's from Canada and that's, I mean, I know you guys are like so close, like some Americans can literally just kind of walk outside and take a you know couple dozen steps and they're in Canada because there are there are properties that are like on the border and there are some properties I believe that the even, border runs through them. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is interesting. But I am not I am not that lucky to to be that close. I've got I've got Lake Erie in between me and Canada. I've been to Canada once. Uh it was in Niagara Falls. It was it was okay. I bought some poutine and <laughs> so so what has Trudeau done? Like has has he been doing like live things every day, every week? He's been doing live things. So he his wife was um confirmed tested positive and then so he did a self isolation for two weeks as a requirement or a co isolation, I guess. So he's clear of that, but he's still semi-isolated. Um, he r- lives in Rido, Rido, I'm going to botcher in the name, Rido Cottage, which is a cottage on the edge of our governor general's property, as opposed to his main house. So it's like the White House, and then you guys have the... Um, the observatory or something that the VP lives in. It's kind of like that. It's kind of an offshoot secondary level house he lives in. So he's been holed up there for the last while and doing 8 a.m. Hmm. Pacific. So 9, 10, 11 um, Eastern webcasts with lots of audio dial-in news report question type things happening. I, f- I feel like a terrible American. I never actually knew where the vice president lived. <laughs> Did you just Google it? No, I'm going to now though, actually. Like uh it's like the Naval the Naval Observatory or something, I wanna say. It's like around the corner from the White House or something. Number one observatory circle. You're I mean, not that I thought you were lying, it's just I never really thought about it. You know what I mean? Like Ah, but number one observatory circle, and I'm going to share my screen here because this is, why not, right? So it's, it's right next to the United States Naval Observatory. And if I zoom out here. Like and and I've only been to DC like once, so I couldn't even tell you 
like where okay so here's the capitol building you lost here's the, the white, white house. house no it's right here yeah so so i mean that's quite a few blocks away they they were smart they they've got some separation there the Is that called air gapping Maybe. I mean, all I know is that they are doing a fantastic job with social distancing. The White House is here, you know, the Capitol building's here, and the VP's way over here. So this is So they actually had a plan, is what you're saying. Mm-hmm. When they built this, they planned for social distancing. I think they planned for something, but I don't know if it was necessarily social distancing. Oh, boy. So... You know, there's there's some really interesting things I'm seeing out in the news, and I'm I'm wondering what you've heard if if you've looked into any of this, if uh, if I sound like a crazy person, well, a crazier person, talking about this stuff, um, because the the really interesting thing is, you know, China, you know, China said that, you know, they. How many did they say they had? They they said they had like maybe five thousand people die, right? Yeah. Um. So we've already had more than that, or we're getting close. Um. No, we've had three thousand. So we're not we're not above China yet, but I mean we're we're creeping up there. We've had four hundred sixty eight deaths. Uh, no, we've had 932 deaths in New York City alone, and then 468 throughout the rest of New York State. I mean, it's it's insane. So between those and then like New Jersey and, um, I mean, that's there's almost 2,000 deaths just right there in that one tiny little area. And it's a very um, dense area as well. Like it's heavily populated. It's heavily populated vertically, whereas a lot of the U.S. is populated horizontally. So is there somewhere in Canada that's similar to New York where it's built up? Our big cities, you're going to find Toronto, uh, Montreal. Um, Any Canadian that's watching is going to be second guessing my guesses. Um, Vancouver, um, Calgary. Those are kind of the big ones heading across. Um, Did you say Calgary? Calgary. I've, I mean, us Americans, we always pronounced it Calgary. Calgary. I don't know. Hey, I don't well, know either, man. All I know is the only thing I know about Calgary is that's where Brett the Hitman Hart's from, okay? That's all I can tell you. <laughs> and, and there's a stampede apparently every year there. I think I forgot about the stampede. You're right, though. So, so where I'm going? Those with all are this... very vertical cities. Okay. So um, Toronto mostly. So, are you guys seeing that type of stuff in Toronto? Not as much. I think um, one of the maritime provinces on the very east coast and um, one of, throughout Quebec are kind of the two largest hit Mm -hmm. um mostly ignoring social distancing is what i heard um the one that they did in the maritimes i can't remember which province they decided to close the liquor stores so that's just cold well yeah and so as a result everybody decides they need to stockpile liquor as opposed to toilet paper now so everybody's cramming into liquor stores which fine kill yourself but everybody around you at the same time So now see, I'm, I'm okay with this only because, so we actually, uh, my wife, she's a good person. Uh, she, she likes to do nice things for people. And the thing that she wants to do right now is, uh, she wants to like write a a nice note to our neighbors. Uh, you know, here's her phone number. Let us know if you need anything, you know, my husband's crazy enough that he's going out to the store all the time if I need stuff. So, you know, if you need any errands run, just, just let us know, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Um, and she wanted to include like a roll of toilet paper and like, you know, kind of like a gag gift, like a, uh, way to break the yep. ice, so to speak, you know, but, 
but I can't, she, she's like, Hey, I need 22 rolls of toilet paper so we can get everyone on our street, which I mean, normally that doesn't sound like a big deal, but you know, between yesterday and then the day before I've gone to four different stores and all of them are sold out. There's no toilet paper. And the one store I went to, uh, they opened up at seven and they were out of toilet paper by 10. Um, that's a local one. I'm not going to bother naming that one, but then there's, there's another one. It's called Aldi. Do you have Aldi in your area? They're all over the U S it's a German company and they sell like their own brand of foods. So, you know, if if you want to go get some like cocoa pebbles, my favorite cereal, they don't have cocoa pebbles. They've got, I don't know. Cocoa stones or something like chocolatey rocks. I don't know what they call them, but I mean, it's a no name equivalent. Right, right. So, but it it tastes, in my opinion, like some of their food actually tastes better. Um, And maybe it's because it's just more processed than the normal stuff. I don't know. But like you go to Aldi and, and they're out of, they've got something that that's the equivalent to, to the red Charmin. That's the one I like the ultra strong, I want that thing to tear when I'm using it, you know, because reasons. Uh, so, so they have theirs, and the the workers there told me if you don't show up in the first ten fifteen minutes of a store opening, you're not getting toilet paper. Yeah, I'm like ten or fifteen. Like who who does that? Like that's that's just ridiculous. Uh, but but where I was going with this is uh, China. There's there's some interesting news out of China. And so there's there's a drop in cell phone users or cell phone numbers, uh SIM cards, whatever the correct terminology is for for what they use in China, right? Uh but there's a drop in the number of, of cell phones out there in China. And I'm not talking like, you know, a few thousand like they said people died. There's a drop in 21 million subscribers in January and February. And the Chinese cell phone companies told the AP, which is the Associated Press, yep. that, oh, don't worry about it. It's not, it's not from people that died. It's because a lot of people just have more than one number. And they're like, oh, we, we can cancel some service right now because there's an outbreak. We're not working. So... I swear it's that nothing's wrong. It's fine. Are you doing a Dan Aykroyd con- conspiracy theory on this? I don't know. I, I mean, so I think, uh, I don't think I'm going Dan Aykroyd because I'm not saying that the government leaders are aliens and, you know, there's, there's a spaceship in the white house. I'm not, I'm not going that far. Okay. But what I am saying is, I think it's safe for us to assume you can't trust everything that comes out of China. That's, that's a fair assessment, right? For a country that controls their media, that's a very fair assessment. It is also fair that that is a country where everyone has to, has to use their phones to operate. They pay for things with their phones. They communicate with their friends and family with their phones. Like their life is their phones. They had Apple Pay and Google Pay long before we had anything similar to that in their own versions. Right. And and they're so ingrained in that uh, NFC type payment thing. Or it might not even be like a touch to pay. I think they might just like type it in like a Venmo type thing. Yeah. Or, or something like it, you know, where they just, they just, you know, do their version of PayPal, send some money over. And um, I don't know. I, I think it's, it's plausible that there are people that had multiple phone numbers, I suppose. That many? Well, what, what's their population? It's, it's in the billion. It's a, it's a billion, at least. I mean, population of china uh they're saying 1.3 billion so that's 1.4 i mean i don't know about you but i remember like third grade math you round up after five and it's 1.386 
<laughs> so in it, 2017. Yeah, so it's got to be 1.4, 1.5 billion. Uh, actually, worldometers.info says 1.4. One billion four hundred thirty-seven million nine hundred thirty-four thousand five hundred fifty-six. They're of, they're watching the hospitals and counting. They must be. So, <laughs> so, so at one point four billion. I mean, we might as well just call it one and a half billion. You know, is it possible that twenty-one million people had extra phone numbers and just decided to turn things off? Yeah, I mean that's that's a reasonable number. I mean, we're talking what is that? 2% of the population. I don't yeah, know. I'm just crunching it. And I'm looking at my other screen as I'm doing this. 1.5%. Okay. So, 1.5% of the population they're saying had extra phone numbers and they got shut down. It seems plausible. But it also seems just as plausible that that many people died. <laughs> and, yep. and especially because there's also uh, other news that I'm seeing. Uh, this one I'm seeing through NPR. Um, and this one is saying that there are people that had coronavirus, COVID-19, and then they recovered. They tested negative, And then they tested positive again for infection. So was the negative test a false negative and they actually still had it and they didn't have enough to detect? And then when they tested it again, it was a better sample and there was enough cell matter or whatever they used to actually test it? Or did they get reinfected? So is it on the, is it on the baseline of the old line of the common cold? You'll never get that variant again. Or is this something more like an infection where you can get the same type of infection over and over and over? And it, it doesn't seem like that should be the case because my understanding is, and this, this is great, like we got two non-scientists talking science right now. Uh, but my understanding is this is not a virus. It's not an infection. It's, it's not a cold it is it is like a modification it's a genetic modification to to dna basically is what it's supposed to be doing but but what i'm seeing here is that based on data from several quarantine facilities in the city of wuhan china um it, they're housing patients for like further observation uh after discharge from hospitals and about 5 to 10% uh, five to ten percent of patients that were pronounced recovered uh, who had tested negative once they had recovered, five to ten percent of those recovered people have tested positive again. And that's, I mean, that's not just a random, oh, that screwed up on this one guy. Like, that's, we're probably, that's a sizable sampling. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're probably talking a couple hundred because Wuhan, I think, got hit pretty hard. Yeah, well, that was the epicenter, apparently. There was a... I think Italy is now the new epicenter. Yeah. There was a science analysis site, kind of an international statistics Mm -hmm. gathering type thing, very non-government, non-media, just a bunch of scientists with all their sources cited. And they were collecting samples of the virus from different regions and they were able to show it kind of almost like a horizontal family tree going here's this type and here's the splits and here's where we see different variants because viruses change over time viruses modify they develop they learn they whatever and they were actually able to show how this region now has this variant and this is when it was introduced and then there's variant Subvariant for this region and subvariant for that region. They were able to show all the splits as it progressed and traveled. So you could be speculating, and yeah, two non scientists, you could actually be hit with a different variant of the same thing. So you know, it makes it makes you wonder though. Like, you know, are are people actually getting sick again? 
Yeah. Are are more people in China dying than we had initially suspected? Um, how how bad is this truly going to get? And I mean, our our president here in the U.S. says we could easily see six figures of people die, which I mean that's a that's a big number, no matter what your population is. You never want to see a hundred thousand people die, but yeah. Um, have they said anything like that to you guys in Canada? No, um, not directly. Um, we have most of the talking points are actually coming from, um, what do they call them? Public health or, um, not public health. Um, chief health officers. So people we've got smarter than Trudeau. people smarter than Trudeau. Um, we've got 10 provinces, three territories, um, and then a federal. So there's theoretically 14 public health officers or um, chief health officers. So where I am in BC, we have um, Bonnie Henry, I believe her name is, who's the chief medical health officer. She does a press conference every day. It live streams on Twitter, Facebook, um, Periscope. The news media picks it up and repeats it. Um, and it's her and the elected health officer together doing the press conference every day. Um, the government official is doing the numerical what is, and the health officer is doing the more sciencey what could be and what needs to be done. And she's the one issuing the orders of um, last week or the week before they closed personal service. So hairdressers, Mm. Um, massage, all that sort of stuff, tattoo, anywhere where it's a service, you're right face to face. Um, can, can so you she's imagine, issuing those. Can you imagine someone going out and trying to get a tattoo right now? Like, yeah, no. <laughs> so, um, I read something this morning. Be skeptical of after the quarantines are lifted, be skeptical of anybody that has a really nice haircut. <laughs> I like that. So, Uh, I know you are, I wouldn't say you're like an Apple fanboy or anything, but you're an Apple user. I'm an Apple user. Uh, Are you, are you keeping up on the uh, Apple news app? We subscribe to it. I don't use it. Um, My wife got a one week, one month, whatever trial click here, you know, the Apple trial things. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was click here for that. But, no, we haven't really used it. Um, our main feed is CBC, which is the national publicly funded um, media station here. I guess that's kind of your I NPR think that's equivalent. Here, yeah. um, so we we basically follow that. The local paper, Twitter, um, we have um, a very close relative that's an ER doctor, so we're getting fair bit of indirect through his wife information coming back to us um so using that and the filtering and the daily media reports when you put that together and then the nightly national news you put all those together you kind of form your own combination um my my big one is i want to know what's happening but i don't want to inundate what can't be changed or what is happening elsewhere within reason, because you can go down, it's like the Wikipedia rabbit hole. You can go down a rabbit hole of never ending news stories. Mm -hmm. No. And and I, I get that. Um, The reason I ask is because uh, here in the States, you know, Washington post has been doing a fantastic job of keeping this, uh, map of the U S and of the world up to date. So this was last updated at three fifteen. So, uh, just, just under an hour ago. So, you know, when you look at this, you know, Washington, California, I mean, they got hit. Um, but New York, you know, it's the worst. In fact, they've got just under half. I feel like they've got like 40% of the confirmed cases in New York. 
And, you know, just like you said earlier, that's, you know, cause they, they built up instead of out. Yeah. You know, here in You're Ohio, using the same elevator as everybody else for another yeah. thousand people. Absolutely. And, and then you look at this, this column here change from Sunday and most of them are up like, I'm going to say on average 20 something percent, you know, there's some that are 11, there's some that are 45. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's frustrating. Now that's, that's one of the common things that I hear here as well is just because a change is reported does not mean that's an actual change out in the field. That's a change that has been reported to the health authority. And that's a change that's showing up by testing. So right. I know so that, following I mean, our there's... news, you guys had issues with some testing getting out to certain regions and certain states. We've had oh, similar where you have to, there's a qualification criteria to be tested. So if you don't meet the criteria, you won't show up in there. You may have it, you may not. And it's it all depends on, it's there needs to be additional columns like, percentage that are suspected percentage deferred from hospital that are probable percentage deferred from hospital that are not likely percentage of population like what is this in relation 177,000 I always remember my high school physics teacher and if you wrote a number without units you would always write back and go what is that seniors per square kilometer walkers per square block like <laughs> it's a number is a number that's great, but it's a relative number to other numbers. But 105,000 105, for Italy, fine. What is their population in relation to the U.S.? What is the per capita of that? And, How does and that that's, relate? And that's absolutely fair. I do wish that these that these tables had more information like that. However, and it's I not think- hard information to gather. It's it's not. And I, I think the, the problem is the news just wants to report the scariest part. They're going dramatic. You know? Right. And and I think that's the most frustrating thing. And and I think that's what a lot of a lot of MSPs right now are <sighs> a lot of MSPs right now are finding themselves in this rut of I need to watch the news because I, I feel, I feel like, um, I, I feel like I'm going to miss something if I don't constantly watch the news. And, and then that puts them in the situation where they're more worried about what's going on out there than what's going on in their own business or in their clients or anything like that. They're worried yeah. about all the what ifs. So I think I think it's good that we have all of this information available to us. That way, at any time, if I want to say, "Well, you know what, New York has seventy five thousand seven hundred ninety five confirmed cases," I could do that. But I I also think that we need to be careful about how much time we're spending looking into this stuff because right now, like this is all the news is reporting. You know, like. Apple News has a COVID-19 section. Yeah. And then they've got the election 2020 section. And uh, and then they've got today, which is supposed to be all the fun news. And see if it's... And and the today section, they're supposed to have all, all of the interesting news. And like, yeah, it's got some, and it's, you know okay, all six seasons of Community are on Netflix and that kind of stuff, but, like, most of it's about COVID-19. So we or, don't have a COVID-19 tab on our Apple News. Yeah. Well, you don't have nearly as many um, infections as, I mean, we, we, have, yeah. we have so many more. We've got more than 10 times the infections that you do. Yeah, but you're also 10 times the population. That's fair. Oh, here's a fun one. Apple acquires Dark Sky Weather App. I love that weather app. It's the weather app we use. And 
Zoom's sudden spike in popularity is revealing its privacy and porn problems. So <laughs> I'm not sure if you heard there was um I think it was like is this a class. Like people jumping into webinars. Um yes. So there was a naked man that hopped into a webinar filled with like kids and a teacher. And and people are just guessing Zoom webinar IDs. And it's it's just man, so so the first thing I'll say to that is, guys, educate your clients. If they're using Zoom, make sure Drop they a password on it. Make sure they put a password on it. Like it can be a three-digit passcode. You know, like it doesn't have to be a big passcode, but it, at least make it harder for somebody to hack into it. You know, <coughs> the other thing that you can do is you can turn on the waiting room feature. So they don't need a password, but they get put in the lobby. They don't. There's they don't get to. The, the you see that somebody's waiting, but you don't. Yeah. Like you'll see their name or their email address, uh, but you don't see their video. You don't hear them, which makes it much safer for kids to not see uh, naked old guys, Willie. I, I mean, I, I feel like I shouldn't have to say this, but apparently I do. You shouldn't have to say it on both sides. You shouldn't have to say it for the <laughs> random person. You shouldn't have to say it for the people setting it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's there's just a lot of crazy stuff happening, man. And and I think I, I think some of it, you know, people are getting stir crazy. You know, where this is, it's day. I don't even know what it is. Day 19? 16, 17, 18, 19, somewhere in there. Because I remember um, the 17th was uh, St. Patrick's Day. And yep. they were already, were, were, were schools already closed on St. Patrick's Day? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because the kids were been. home. Kids were home. Yeah. Yeah. So I know for sure that they were closed that week. St. Patrick's Day was a Tuesday. Were the schools closed the week before that? I think it was that Friday before that when they yeah. just stopped going. So yeah, we're we're deep in this, man. This this Thursday coming up, two days from now, will be at four p.m. Will be or five p.m. Will be three weeks since we were all last in the office. So Thursday the twelfth, at the end of the day, we wrapped up. I was going to wrap it up on Monday yeah. the sixteenth, but I just said why wait go home now um and see anytime i say why wait i assume you need to assume the next thing out of my mouth is going to be grab a snickers <laughs> but we we can't does, does that does that bring you satisfaction or is that still an ad uh wasn't, I, wasn't that I their ad i don't know i can't get no satisfaction that's a song I think there was a song called that. I swear that was the. <laughs> yes, there was. <laughs> Stop messing with me, man. <laughs> I mean, look, I know I'm not old enough to have actually heard that song for the first time when it came out, but uh, I at least know a little bit about the Stones. Now, what 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 were you pouring over there? Is that just straight tequila? Straight Canadian tequila. Canadian tequila sounds like maple syrup to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we drink it straight. The highway straight. patrol and everything. You uh you just you just tap your maple trees. Well, we got maple trees in the backyard. We just tap our maple trees. It runs straight into the kitchen. We've got a little tap in everybody's kitchen that we can just yeah. turn on the maple. And the maple trees are right next to the igloos where we keep the dog sled crew. So when we need to go to work, we fire up the dog sled so we can go and uphill in the snow both ways. We can go on the dog sled mm -hmm. to get to work. So but when we get to the border, we can't bring animals over the border. So there's like a kennel where we can park our dog sleds and our dogs while we're in the States. So we, we check them there and then pick them up on the way back. So I think you'll appreciate this, Ian. Uh, it's probably been 
eight or nine years now. Uh, I was playing one of those like Call of Duty Black Ops games and I was in a clan and uh, I'm playing online with my clan buddies and the one, the one leader is from Canada. I don't remember what part. It's really not important. But we'd always tease him for being from Canada and I don't really know why. Because, like, you guys are all really nice people for the most part. I mean, um, but I remember, like, I'm just a really gullible person. And I remember he convinced me that you guys sell milk in bags. We do. There was actually, it was in the paper. It was, like, paper or Reddit or something within the last month. Um milk in bags in canada and it was actually explaining um foodnetwork.ca um why do canadians drink bagged milk um and it's literally you buy a bag and it's two liters so i don't know what two liters is but i don't know that's about two liters i know what two liters is it looks like a it, it looks like a thing of soda here in the states we sell your, two your big soda pop. bottles big yeah. soda bottles two liters um, milk bags have been in Canadian fridges since the seventies, mainly in Ontario, Quebec, and the Maritimes. Uh, package contains three unresealable plastic pouches filled with milk, equaling four liters in total. Then you put the bag into a pitcher, snip off the corner, start pouring. Um, why not just sell like a plastic it was, carton? It was milk, something whatever. to do with, um, it was some, it was either like the metric system coming in um, or something where to be compliant, you had to do something, but this was a way to get around compliance or it's like the butter or margarine or something is yellow because it's dyed. And if you don't dye it or you couldn't buy butter, if, unless it was yellow because of taxes, like it's all these weird, um, you think I'm going off on a tangent, but it's true. There's something about butter or margarine and you had to color it to make it legal or sellable that i mean that sounds as ridiculous as that state that has the law that you're not allowed to walk around with an ice cream cone in your back pocket on sundays like why well, <laughs> i i want to know what idiot makes these laws um made the switch no-brainer dupont a canadian food and packaging company unveiled thin plastic bags could use to store milk and sell milk in 1967 Dairy began ditching glass bottles, adopted this newfangled plastic pouch, more practical, cost-efficient. Basically, it's like Central Canada, Ontario, Quebec, and Maritimes. But there was something else about um, CBC. The metric system is one reason Canada gets moo juice in bags. Um, so, yeah, we do have milk, chocolate milk in bags. And, yeah. And that's crazy because, you know, here in the States, you know, I feel like back in the day we had our milk delivered to us and it was in like glass bottles. Yep. And, but, but when you, Ian, you go to the store, you get your milk in like a, a gallon or well, no, yours isn't a gallon, is it? Uh, it's all based off the milliliter liters. So you can get. A 250 milliliter, which is like the milk box size school yeah. lunch one. You can get a 500 milliliter that's like the adult lunch box size. You can get a one liter that's like a three inch by three inch by eight inch container. A uh, two liter and a four liter jug that's... Four liter jug is probably the gallon. I think that's about a gallon size. Um, and we get them mostly in either the tetra pack cardboard gable top tear open paper ones mm -hmm. or a that white frosted plastic um recyclable thing with a screw top you get them either way and see our our system just doesn't make any sense because we have all of those same sizes ish we've got yeah. the we've got the pint we've got the quart we've got the half gallon and then the gallon, which a liter, four liters is 1.05669 gallons. 
So they probably use the same so container close. and just put more or less depending on which side of the border you're in. It's so close, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It might be the same container. Um, and in fact, they might not even change the amount they put in there. They might just say, screw it. Like, <laughs> Oh, if, if they can make half a cent times a million containers, they will. Yeah. So it, it's, yeah. All right. So uh, recently I had Jeff from Cloud Radio on. And yes, the reason, Mr. Jeff. The, we're going to talk about IT stuff now, guys. We're, Is that what we do? Sometimes. Um, oh. And I got to say, I reached out to Jeff because of you. You, um, so for those of you that, that maybe don't know, um, I run Rocket MSP, which is like a peer group type thing for MSP business owners. Ian is a member of one of the groups and um, we, we do like homework and I'm kind of the accountability partner and I just kind of help. I, I don't know. How, how do you think it is besides terrible? <laughs> accountability partner. That's a good term for it. I was going to say draconian homework assigner, but accountability partner sounds much more Canadian than. <laughs> oh, I got to go with the other one then. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a tyrant. I'm a homework tyrant is what I am because I make you guys yes. do things that you don't really want to do. But I think for the most part, it, it does help. It it pushes over certain hurdles and they're bite size. Um, quite often, you're assigning them in tandem. You're giving the group something or there's something else or somebody who's at a similar point with something they're working on. So it's kind of the homework buddy concept without calling it that. You can mm-hmm. generally find somebody that's either just done it, is just about to do it, or is doing it that week. So mm-hmm. you're not totally out to lunch on your own on it good so one of the pieces of homework i gave you guys oh maybe a month ago was it feels it feels like a year ago after after the last 19 days let me tell you man but uh one of the pieces of homework i gave you guys about a month ago was to build like a checklist of all of the things that you should be doing or asking, or whatever, when it comes to onboarding a new employee for existing clients. And ideally, this was a more generic checklist, not one specifically for XYZ company. You know, this was something that you could use for all of your clients and and reuse, you know. Um, And Ian, I feel like you, you knocked it out of the park, man. Not only did you, did you like make your, your checklist, but you turned it into a form that people could fill out on cloud radio, which would then create a ticket for you and connect wise with all of the information there in the ticket. And that's something like, I'm not going to profess that before that assignment I went out and found, or that week I went out and found cloud radio. I've had it for a while. I haven't implemented that component of it and not just that new user onboarding, that whole form component of it. I've had other sections um that i've used um more but with that yeah we put that in um and with it you're able to split off or create subgroups so you can actually have forms or a group of forms that only apply to a certain client or a class of clients if you've got a group of schools you could have a school fill it flavored form um so i took the form and built out the form from there they've got a bit of a starter template so i took Mm -hmm. that and then looked at what we're seeing and sort of spun off from there. So does the laptop, does the user require a new computer? Yes or no? If no, then just keep going on. If yes, then it comes up with a pop-up and now goes laptop or desktop. If it goes desktop, one or two monitors. If it goes laptop, do you need a dock? Do you need a wireless keyboard? So there's all of these if-then workflow points through it. Which is really so, awesome you're not giving a user a massive form of check boxes that they're going to have to ignore. It's not like filling in your tax form at the end of the year and having to do all these skip to this and choose your own adventure. We choose the adventure for them. And then there's and one client. They're, that we've they're got. going on a journey, you know, yeah. they're, and it's, it's like a, it's like a choose your own adventure in the sense that 
they they only see the one question. And if they answer one way or the other way, then they get kind of redirected where they need to be. So it's not, it could be as cu- as confusing as filling out a tax form, but the way you've configured it, it's not. No, they just follow the bouncing ball as they go. So we took that and then extended that form. We cloned it over for another client that has a fair bit of churn um, in terms of employees in and out. They're a nonprofit. So they've got 100, 150 employees, and they're always having two, three, four per week in and out. And they've got the traditional server with the network shares, um, and they've got 15 or 20 different shares. So what we're doing now with them is one of the questions is, who should we replicate this user from? And then the follow-up is, are they replacing that user? Because if they're replacing it, well, let's start off by just copying them an AD over and using that as a starting point. And then it still makes them go through the list of shares that are to be allocated to the person. They still have to manually check off the shares that are being granted to the person. But we use that kind of as a second check to go, okay, we're copying this person over. Oh, you've added 20 shares. Well, are they actually that person or are they a different person? Oh, no, they're a different person. So we're using that as a way of getting the specific data for them in. Um, And it's what I really like about it is it's creating one new user request per ticket. Mm -hmm. And what we were initially doing with them was we had a spreadsheet that was fine and did its thing. But the spreadsheet would have five users in it. And you couldn't find that person's onboarding request without going through, oh, that was about this time, open up the spreadsheets, go through your tickets, find it. This way, with Cloud Radial, it's actually pulling field data from the form that they fill and putting that into the subject line of the ticket, which becomes the the um, the subject of, like, it's the subject line of the um, API push. So you're actually getting the new user, or the new employee's name in the ticket. So when we look at the company, we can actually go through and very quickly find, no, here is the request. And yes, you did request that they get access to the management finance share. So we've, we've got that ease of finding things. And we're it's a little bit of forcing them to march in a bit of a line. It's forcing them to follow a bit of a pattern. And it just allows us that much more efficiency and the ability to see what's going on in there. So... I'm I'm genuinely curious be, because you have this let's let's just call it what it is this really neat tool that lets you do yep. all of this into, if then with it will you be updating kind of like a generic create a ticket form to where if if they're asking someone to come on site are you able to or are you going to update it to where um, you know are 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 you or anyone else recently tested positive for coronavirus uh do you Ooh. have a do you have a temperature of 38 degrees celsius or higher like you know a- ask them these kind of questions that way you can gauge like is it safe for me to send my tech out there or not so far we're not doing anything on site um okay. in the last three weeks well rephrase that in the last three weeks we've done one on site where One of my techs who I asked specifically if he was comfortable multiple times, um, it's a basement off the parkade server room that doesn't have any client interaction. There's no staff in and out of there from the client site. So basically, it's our room there. So you can literally drive up to it and back. Um, And we did a Sunday night repatch and clean up and removed a 12-year-old HP switch that the whole other mess that we just discovered as we were doing that um so we've done one of those um yesterday a printer arrived we use a ups store for some of our shipping that's where all of our checks come our clients mail to the ups store because it's a secure pickup easy thing Um, we've still got the office there but what we've been doing is we've been shipping stuff to my house or to the office and we can remotely open the door for the shipping company to drop packages and this one somewhere at distribution ended up getting rerouted and got shipped to our billing address, not our shipping address. 
and it went to the UPS store. So I picked it up there. That's fine. And dropped off the printer at the client site outside their facility, waved at them through the window, mouthed the words package for you, phoned them to make sure they got it, waited in the car until they got it and took it in. And it's a work group, but desktop size printer. So nothing they can't carry, but not going in. Now, it's also a extended care facility, a seniors residence. So they're so it's also they are, for their protection. It's for their protection as well. Like they're more at risk than I am um, in that case because they have been on quarantine for two, three weeks already themselves. So um, I would more likely bring something in on my clothes or I'm an asymptomatic carrier for all we know, whatever. So drop and go. And we've just been doing drop shipping and so far so good. It's been working out fine. Um, we've had some larger Xeroxes delivered that they're still carryable, but substantial sized. And we basically walked them through, okay, unbox it, remove all the tape, plug it in and get it a D- get a DHCP address. And if you can get a DHCP address, it's on the network and we'll find it and we'll go through it. Hmm. And we do the rest of the config remotely. So it's in a way it's almost teaching the figure out how to do it remotely is it costing any more time not really um is it is it costing some frustration with customers yet not yet um most of the customers that we've spoken to or sorry clients that we've spoken to um most of the clients are on board with it they get it so the seniors residences absolutely get it. Um, they understand that we are not coming on site and they don't want us on site. Um, the other clients, we're just doing remote support as things come up. Um, and in some cases, if there is a staff member there, we're walking them through, okay, there should be a thing called a router. It's going to look like this. And it's probably going to say this on the front of it. Great. Find the power cord on the back, pull the power cord, count to 10, plug it in. There you go. So, We've always been able to do that. Sometimes you do want to go on site. Sometimes you do want a personal touch. Sometimes you're in the neighborhood and it's just as easy to go on site. It really depends. But no, the guys are all working from home and just dealing with things as they come up. And we've we've had the work from home capability from the get go anyway. So it's it wasn't a shock to the system. Um the only thing the guys are saying, one of my guys said. Once I'm done for the day, I just minimize your stuff and maximize my stuff and still sit at my computer for more hours in the evening. So it's not like he gets up and walks home anymore. He's just changing hats at the same desk. Um, so it's it's working out reasonably well, as best as can be expected. Gotcha. Um. Hmm. So I had a question and I lost it. Don't you hate when that happens? Sorry, were we talking about something? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What who are you? Who are where where am I? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm you know, it doesn't help that I've I don't know about you, but I've got I've got kids home. The kids are home because they can't go to school. Yep. Can't can't go over hang out with a friend social distancing. Do you guys call it social distancing in Canada? We do. Uh, I think that's stuck worldwide. Okay. So our president Trump, uh, he recently, you know, he, he said, "I, I want, I want everything back up and running by Easter." And he finally said, "You know, that's probably not going to happen." He extended it through April thirtieth. Social distancing through April 30th is the recommendation. And Governor DeWine for Ohio here, um, he actually just went on um, yesterday and extended the school closure from, oh, what was the school closure? Schools were supposed to go back into session on, what is it, the 6th? I'm just looking here. Yeah, April 6th. So this upcoming Monday, my kids were supposed to go back to school. 
It's not the case anymore. Nope. It got pushed to April 30th through the month. So I don't know if my kids are going back to school. Um, I don't, I don't know if they're ever going back to school. Like it just, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I want to say like, I love my kids. I joke about my kids a lot. You know, I, <laughs> they, they are a handful. Uh, but I think all kids are, and I think it, uh, I joke about everything. You know, if you, if you've seen me on any of these webinars, podcasts, whatever, you, you know, I've, I've always got something snarky to say. So my kids do too. They, they just know to deal with it. In fact, my, my uh, daughter, she's got like a French name and I, I tell her her name is French for shithead. <laughs> and my, my son has a German name. I tell him his name is German for shithead. Um, but so I you're also, culturally diverse in the naming. Yeah. Well, they're adopted, so we didn't pick the names. Um, <laughs> their, their mom did. Uh, but I've also, I've also convinced my daughter I have a second middle name. <laughs> She she thinks my second middle name is Razzle Norfolopolophagus. <laughs> and every time I say it, I pause and I go, it's Greek. <laughs> 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 because what else would it be? You know, it, it ends with fucus and <laughs> before all of this happened, there was people going to therapy. After all of this, there's gonna be a ton more people needing therapy from everything that's going on. I, yeah, well, yeah, my my kids are gonna need therapy after all of the pranks I'm gonna play on them. Um, and I'm gonna need therapy just for being around them. So <laughs> So are you gonna be setting up daily classroom time? We actually already are. Uh, right now they're in, uh, go to your room and watch TV and leave daddy alone time and <laughs> be, because he's recording something important. So leave daddy be, uh, but, but before this, like I even, I, I have this, uh, this YouTube video I found, it doesn't even have a video, but it's, it's of like an old school, like bell in a school. So yeah. I've got, I've got like the classroom bell and like, you know, a couple minutes before the hour starts, I'll just ring the bell and then, all right, kids go, go to the bathroom, go to the water fountain. We don't have a water fountain, you know, <laughs> feel free to stop by your locker, switch your books around, you know, just, so, so I give them a chance to like, you know, stretch a little and, and then, so like we've got, um, we'll have like an hour of uh, educational time. And we're really lax right now because because DeWine said we're just going to do three weeks of of spring break initially, so they're on this crazy long spring break to where no work is being mandatory assigned, nothing's being yeah. checked for for grades, any of that. But we need them to have that routine, so you know we we'll give them academic stuff, and it could be something as simple as, you know, my son who's still working on reading and stuff, you know, asking him how to spell certain words. Uh, we're asking my daughter, who's a middle schooler, can you please just do some mazes, like literally anything that will make your brain have to work. Uh, I'm okay if if we sit down and play Exploding Kittens. You know, it's a card game. We don't actually explode the kittens. Um, but just anything to get their brain working, you know, yeah. um, and then, and then I ring the bell and then they, then the next period is creative time. So Ulrich spent his hour of creative time working with my wife and they were cutting up vegetables and then they put all the vegetables in a saucepan and, um, I don't know, six cups of water, a couple bouillon cubes, and they made vegetable soup. It was actually pretty good. Like, I didn't, I didn't expect it to be any good, but it was actually pretty good. <laughs> and then, you know, like, 
you know, they, they, they build things with Legos, you know, go, go build me a Tyrannosaurus Rex out of Legos. And we just give them something ridiculous and, and they build it or go, go collect 10 Legos. And now you have to draw them in 3d, like just something to, to keep, keep the mind flowing, you know? And then there's uh, later in the day, we'll do like, educational time where they're allowed to use the electronics for the educational stuff. So then there's like all these websites like cool math and PBS kids and, you know, whatever else that we've got for the, for them. And, you know, the teachers have been great. They've been sending stuff over. So we've got a lot of things that we can log into to keep them. I wouldn't say entertained because it, it clearly upsets one or both of them every single day because they're like, this is stupid. Yep. I, I'm to the point where they're going to be sitting down with principal dad real soon. I think they might get suspended or expelled if they don't cut the attitude. <laughs> um, you, do you have kids, Ian? No kids. Got a dog. You lucky guy. You who's asleep on the couch on the other side of this. You lucky guy, you. That's fair. So so with this whole, you know, working from home thing, do you find it do you find it difficult to like get yourself motivated, get yourself ready for the day? Not hugely. Um we have one team member that works um, three hours ahead of us. So he's in Ottawa. So he's Eastern time. We're Pacific. So he's got an early start. So by the time I'm up and awake and looking at things, there's already normally a few items that have popped up and there's things already kicking in. So it's never the, okay, what's on the radar. It's more like here is what is on the radar already. Um, So we've got that start to the day. Um, and no, with the team members, it's sort of keeping an eye on who's where, what's happening, what tickets are coming through. Um, there's always the ticket where you look at it and you see a query coming through where you go, I need to interject something or don't write back to that. Excuse me. Don't write back to that yet. We need to do something else or don't forget to do this. So you're on the go right away. Um, and for the first however many years of my business, it was home-based. So in a way, this is kind of old hat. Um, okay. The office just happened when an acquisition happened and there was additional staff coming on board. So it wasn't a, um, it wasn't a shock to the system. Um, we moved recently and had space, so I set up an office at home. So I've already had the office set up at home. We've got the VoIP connection. I've got the desk phone. I basically have what I have at the office here. So it's just one or the other. Um, and it's it's separate enough that you go to work and you go home. Um, <laughs> that it's there's a little bit of minimal, but there's a little bit of separation. So there is a bit of a different hat being worn. Do you, do you find it difficult to like turn it off, you know, to, to leave the office? Depends on the day. Depends on what's happening. Um, my wife and I have slightly different work schedules. So when she's at work, I'm generally just working because why not? Um, sure. So it really depends on what's happening that day and what needs to get done. Okay. And do you have any recommendations for people that aren't used to working from home as to what they can do to, to maybe start their day and, and stay focused? As a couple of things, as hard as it is, depending on your situation, depending on where your business is, if you're doing the work from home, having a separate setup is nice. I have my desktop that I use for my office space here, and I've got a laptop and an iPad that's my own life. 
and it just really separates the two of them um, hmm. from that aspect. And that just comes back from years of working corporate where um, I always said to people, don't use your personal, don't use your work email as if it was a personal email. Don't use your work computer as if it was a personal computer. If you are no longer an employee at this company tomorrow, I will take your computer from you. This is when I was running the IT at a company. I will take your computer from you and everything on it. And you may or may not get back what you think is yours on that computer because it's technically the company's. So I've always had that mindset. So being able to separate those is definitely really nice, having your work set up and having your home set up. Um, if you can, if you've got the ability to have a separate space that's your work desk, um, that definitely is beneficial. Um, I know that's not always possible, but having that is definitely nice because then it's your work stuff here, not your personal stuff here. Um, whereas if it's all one and it's all the same machine, then it's also got your Netflix tab minimized. It's got your whatever game minimized and that's right there. So having that has definitely been a a benefit, I think. Um, but it depends on your business, your circumstances, how you are set up to operate. Is it weird that I don't really play any games on my computer? I don't play games. Oh, okay. I, I think I've got, I've got Tetris on my iPhone because occasionally I need something there, but yeah. Well, I play games on like my iPhone and my iPad. In fact, so I um I've got a, a an Xbox One, and it's like dying. It and I'm just you know the the, the Xbox Two or whatever the hell they call the thing, which is the the fourth or fifth Xbox that's coming out. Uh, that's going to come out, I think, later this year, unless they push things because the economy is shit or yeah. whatever so i'm like why would i spend money and replace this when i'm gonna maybe get the new one when it comes out i don't know so i i took the xbox controller if you've got one of the newer xbox controllers it'll actually hook up to an ios device it's so, a bluetooth connection yeah so i'm using an xbox controller which is far more comfortable than than those like steel series Nimbus controller or whatever they sell specifically for iOS. It's just so much more comfortable. Uh, so much more ergonomic. Well, they've been refining that. gaming for how many years? Right. But I'll, I'll use that and, and I'll, and I'll just kind of hang out and play games on my iPad anymore. In fact, I got, I, I've, <laughs> here's, here's how bad it is. I've got one of those like, those like boom arm things, the flexible arms. I put the iPad in this holder and it holds the iPad for me like in bed. So I'll go to bed at like eight because that's when my wife wants to go to bed. And yeah. I'm I'm more the night owl. So I'll be in bed. I'll have like my iPad like like here and it's just it's just here. And I'm I'm just laying there looking up at my iPad playing games. <laughs> my wife, she's uh, may or may not be snoring away and and I'm just playing games, having a good old time on the iPad, man. And uh, they got the, the Call of Duty mobile. So I'm I now run around and kill people on my iPad. The only thing that would be would be making it better is if I was in a different room so I could hook up the headset and talk to them and be like, oh no, there's terrorists in this room. Like, <laughs> you know, like have have because because it has it like it has it all. It has all the things for the most part that you would expect from Call of Duty, like on an Xbox, and it's on my iPad, man. The iPad has horsepower. It does, and and I gotta say, I've got, you know, I I got the uh, the new iPad Pro. Well, the 2018 iPad Pro now, um, and I am not. There's the, new, there's the new lidar iPad Pro. So the the 2020 iPad Pro, I am not as like impressed with it as I thought I would be. I'm not as disappointed that I went out and got this one like yeah. two weeks before the 2020 came out as I thought I would be. So it has, you know, the, the 17 cameras back here, like an iPhone does and it has LIDAR, which you mentioned, but I think everything else might be the same. Like yeah. it's, it's like the same 
Safe. They're running out of stuff to put in there. No, I, I don't think so. I think they're going to come up with more. Have so so you have an iPad. Is yours like mine or is it an older model? Mine's one before. It's the Pro 2017, I want to say. Okay. So it was the first of that still, Pro-ish. Actually, it was the second generation of Pro. But it still has the um, home button. It still has the physical home button. So I I will say this. Did you did you upgrade to iOS uh was it thirteen dot four yet? Yes, yesterday, and have not hooked up any pointing device to it yet. I did. It's actually not bad. It's a little weird. So I'll be honest. So, so like, you know, on because you're a Mac user too. Uh, so, you know, like, if you're, if you're in, like, Safari, how when you use the two-finger scroll and it just kind of keeps going? Yeah. Or, or even better, on the iPad, when you just flick the finger and then it just keeps going and going and going. That's what kind of like what the mouse cursor does when you use a trackpad. But it makes so much more sense to use a trackpad instead of a mouse because yeah. they've they've implemented um, gestures into the trackpads. So I've got you know I've got this magic trackpad two or whatever it's called from Apple, and they've got you know pinch pull like all these different things you can do yeah. on the trackpad, which as is if the same were, as what you could do on the iPad. Exactly, which make it even more enjoyable of an experience to be completely honest, because now I don't have to touch the screen if I don't want to. And you got to think, man, this is a 12.9 inch. This is, this is like back when I had the 12 inch MacBook. remember they sold those MacBook without the pro or air for the short time. And that was a 12 inch. This thing is bigger than that. The screen. So, I'm pleased. Um, I think they're crazy for how much money they want to charge for that new uh, magic keyboard for the iPad because they want like $350 for that thing. And it's it's got the keyboard and the trackpad built in like a laptop. But $350? Like, ugh. that's... You could literally buy a laptop it's, for that amount of money. You can buy a Chromebook for that easily. Yeah. But a Chromebook's not as awesome as an iPad Pro. No. And I think that's where they get you is because you're already spending like eight, nine hundred dollars on an iPad Pro. So what's another three fifty? Well, eight, nine hundred dollars, depending if you want cellular, if you want two fifty six, or if you want five twelve, you can spend $1,500 on an iPad Pro. Well, including this, including the pencil and this keyboard, you can get up to two grand. Yeah. Oh, and you want the leather case and you want the whole everything. Mm. Yeah. Makes me want to go out and buy more accessories. Not really. <laughs> no. All right. Well, Ian, thank you so much for coming on doing this. I think Absolutely. We'll have to Same do this time again, again tomorrow. Uh, I've I've got uh, I've already got five more of these scheduled. You can um, you can line me up between math and social studies or something, right? Hey, you you know, could have guest you could have guest teachers. That actually is not a bad idea. We should we should talk about this. Well, we, we could teach Canadian history. I think I want you to teach my kids metric. Yep. Actually, no, I want you to teach them the imperial system. Okay. And, and I'll teach you'll the metric. Teach, you'll teach, yeah, metric Cause, up here. Okay. Because it's easy enough. I couldn't possibly screw up metric. You just multiply and divide by 10, but you yep. will butcher imperial. Yes. Because <laughs> it was all based off some king and the number of steps around his property to create uh -huh. few yards. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's 5,280 feet in a mile. Yes. But go to your university and ask any scientist there what system they use. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for popping on here, Ian. Absolutely. Hopefully we can do this again sometime. Definitely. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye.